Hello students, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we'll be studying the back exercises of chapter 1 computer system. We are doing class 11 computer science from the NCRT book and we have covered all the theory of chapter 1. So in this video, we'll be doing the back exercises. We'll be discussing them one by one. Okay, so starting with the first question, name the software required to make a computer functional. So it is the system software and specifically the operating system. We have studied that system softwares are uh, the softwares that provide or allow the computer system to perform basic functions and operating system is the software that starts the computer it allows other softwares and hardwares to run to communicate and to provide services to the end user now write down its two primary services you can write down that the operating uh, operating system acts as a resource manager it uh, allocates the required resources to different processes different components of the computer system and it, you can also write any of the four services provided by the operating system including uh, process management, memory management, file management or device management. We have discussed all these things in the previous videos. You can refer to the playlist. Okay. Now coming to the second question. How does the computer understand a program written in high level language? No computer cannot understand a program written in high level language. So the high level language program or the source code must be converted to machine code or machine level language and this is also known as the object code now this conversion is done either through compilers or interpreters that, that convert high level language into machine level language okay the third question why is the execution time of machine code less than that of the source code see machine code is closest to the computer system in terms of understandability it is in Machine code is written in forms of binary numbers or binary digits that is zeros and ones. So the computer can directly understand it. On the contrary, source code is either written in assembly language or high level language. If it is written in assembly language, it must be converted to machine code using assembler or if it is written in high level language, it must be converted to machine code using compilers or interpreters. So this conversion takes time. That is why the execution time of machine code is less because it can directly be executed by the computer system whereas the execution time of source code is more because it, it is first converted into machine code and then it is executed. Okay. Now the fourth question is what is the need of RAM? So RAM basically stands for random access memory. Why do we need RAM? Because any program or any instruction that must be executed by the computer system specifically by the central processing unit it must be present in the ram so that the computer can access it okay so if cpu needs to perform any task that corresponding program must be present in the ram so that that can be fetched from the ram by the cpu and the instructions can be executed okay so uh, how does it differ from rom okay so uh, ram and rom uh, constitute two types of primary memory that is present with the cpu rom is read only memory you cannot change the contents that are written into the rom whereas ram is random access memory you can read also and you can write also apart from this ram is volatile in nature that means as long as there is power supply in the computer system contents or data stored in the ram will be retained but rom is non-volatile that means it does the contents that are once written into the rom will remain there they will not get uh, wiped out when the power supply is not there okay so this is the base, basic difference between ram and rom Coming to the fifth question, what is the need of secondary memory? Alright, so secondary memory, uh, though it is uh, cheaper and slower, it is slower, that is why it is cheaper than primary memory, it is required because there is a limited amount of storage in the primary memory. Okay, primary memory, if it is RAM, then it is non-volatile in nature. 
or if primary memory is ROM, then it is only read-only memory. You cannot change the content. So there is a problem with both the kinds of primary memory, the RAM as well as ROM. That is why we need a secondary storage mechanism, which is the secondary memory, so that we have larger storage capacity than the primary memory. We have a permanent storage capacity. It is non-volatile okay so secondary memory is non-volatile it we can have larger storage capacity and we can read as well as write okay so both uh, read write operations are possible so these are the reasons why we need the secondary memory all right proceeding to the sixth question why do different comp how do different components of the computer system communicate with each other so speaking generally um different softwares allow different components of so uh, computer to communicate with each other but if you have to um, talk about the cpu and the memory or communication of the cpu with other components then you will be writing this answer in the form of uh, the system bus okay so there are uh, three main buses that can comprise the system bus the address bus the data bus and the control bus so when the cpu has to communicate with the memory it uses the these buses and uh, when the cpu has to send some control signals or instructions then also it uses uh, the con it uses the control buses okay so in general if you talk about you can mention both these points different other softwares allow other components of the computer to communicate but specifically talking we will be mentioning about the system buses also okay so coming to question seven, draw the block diagram of a computer system, write, briefly write about the functionality of each component. Now this block diagram I explained in the second lecture of this uh, playlist. So in, it will comprise of four major components of the computer system which are the central processing unit, the input device, the output device and the secondary storage devices you will have to explain the functionality of each component cpu is the brain of the computer every task that is performed in the C in the computer is actually executed or managed by the cpu okay the input devices allow users to provide or give instructions and commands to the uh, computer system and output devices allow the results to be presented to the End users storage devices allow data storage in larger manner in larger quantities okay so you'll have to explain not only draw the diagram in this question but also explain briefly in short about the main function of each of the component I've discussed this in that video also you can refer to specific videos for um, details of each question okay all right so coming to question number eight what is the primary role of system bus? Why is data bus, why is data bus is bidirectional? Why address, address bus is unidirectional? Okay, so system bus helps in communication. Uh, it allows CPU to communicate with the memory when we are talking about the address and the data bus and the control bus. System bus comprises of these three buses. Okay, so it allows communication between different components through physical wires. Okay, and why is data bus bidirectional? Because data can be written by the CPU to the memory or data can be uh, provided by the memory to the CPU. So this communication is happening both ways. It is happening in two directions. That is why it is bidirectional. However, addresses can never be provided. Uh, they will, addresses are always provided by the CPU to the memory because the CPU specifies it, at this address I want to write this content or from this particular memory address I want to read the content. So the memory will never tell the CPU any address. The address bus will always operate from the CPU to the memory. That is why the, the, the contents, the addresses flow in one directional and that is why the address bus is unidirectional. Okay. Okay, now coming to question number nine. Differentiate between proprietary software and freeware. 
name two software for each type okay so proprietary software are the softwares which are licensed which have copyrights which must be purchased from the vendors their source code is not public and uh, they are not freely available on the contrary freeware softwares are the ones whose source code is not available to the public but they are they can be freely downloaded okay so you can see the examples in your book also or you can refer to the examples that you use in your daily life all right so write the main difference between microcontroller and microprocessor why do smart home appliances have a microcontroller instead of microprocessor embedded in them all right so we have a very dedicated video on this question uh, named microcontroller i'll just uh, tell the differentiating points here again microcontroller consists of us all the components of the computer on a microchip however in contrast to this microprocessor only consists of the cpu on the microchip okay so microcontroller is like a small computer that is uh, present on a very small integrated circuit integrated circuit which is made up of semiconductor materials that is the microchip okay and microprocessors are are uh, not embedded into the home appliances whereas microcontrollers are embedded because microprocessor is not a complete system in its itself it requires communication with input output devices it requires the memory and other buses to communicate and perform some functionality okay so it is incomplete in itself but microcontroller is a complete system that can manage the functions the dedicated functionality of a particular home appliance that is why they are present in embedded form and the microcontroller is the complete system in a very minute chip it is a very small computer system the complete system is very small that also allows it to it 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 al that allows it to perform specific functionality in a very a restricted space also okay all right coming to question 11 mention the different types of data that you deal with while browsing the internet so firstly you have html pages which are um, semi structured data because html pages are uh, in the form of tags then if you download a uh, uh, any file that is con that consists of a tabular content okay that if I, that or you have come across uh, uh, see basically the answer to this question is that you can find all types of data structured unstructured and semi-structured while browsing the internet specifically if you are uh, referring to html pages then that is semi-structured data unstructured data is present in the form of um, in the form of uh, if you download a file that is completely in the form of graphics and uh, containing a mix of textual as well as uh, graphics and only if it is a tabulous ordered information then it will be structured but at the same time if you are only browsing the internet since everything will be in the form of html pages then you'll be referring it to as the uh, semi-structured data so you'll have to carefully write this answer because you can find different types of data and you have to give specific examples of each type we have discussed the types of data in a specific video you can refer it to that refer for this question okay the 12th question says us to categorize the given uh, data into all one of the three categories so newspaper content is definitely unstructured because it consists of pictures also it consists of text also and a mix there is no order or tabular format cricket match score if it is only consisting since it only consists of numbers and fixed columns represent fixed uh, types of values then it is structured data okay it, it does not has any tags so it will not be a semi-structured data it does not has any kind of graphics or video so it will not be an unstructured data html page is definitely a semi-structured data it is a tagged or marked up page okay patient records in a hospital is definitely structured data but again if it is in the form of uh, tags 
that means it is in the form of uh, csv files uh, so it again depends on the storage that what kind of storage has been used so you need to justify uh, while you are categorizing okay question 13 name the input output devices used to do the following to output audio speakers to enter textual data keyboard to make hard copy of a text file printer to display the data or information you have monitors or display uh, screens to enter audio based command then you have voice inputs like microphones uh, uh, mics that you say okay to build 3d models you have 3d printers to assist a visually impaired individual in entering data you have braille keyboards so last question is identify the category that is system application or programming tool of the following software so compiler is a language translator so basically it comes under programming tool assembler again is a language translator it is a programming tool ubuntu is a system software so it comes in the category of system software and text editor is an application software so this was all for today's lecture these are all the questions the back exercises i hope you have understood these questions if you like this video please press the like button and share it with your friends and mention in the comment section below uh, if you need any help or guidance please subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to get the notification of our future videos so we'll be seeing you and continuing this series for uh, by doing chapter 2 of class 11 so till then mind your exam thank you for watching stay tuned to our channel